Um, my name is Adam Hurst, and I'm a data visualization developer for Oxford Nanopore Technologies. Uh, or more specifically, I work for this uh, thing called Metricore, which is our cloud-based bioinformatics platform. Um, and I'm going to show you, in just five minutes, one of the apps I've been working on, very quickly. Um, so, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to highlight a couple of the principles that I try to abide by when designing a dashboard. And the first one is really understanding the end user. And I think a lot of the talks that I see are focused on, say, more an academic end user. I also think for, for the platform that we're building, um, a lot of the people using it might not be trained by informaticians. They'll be people like Marek, who actually has one of our menions, one of these portable DNA sequencing devices, who are much more interested in the, the results coming out of the analysis rather than the in-depth technical information behind it. Um, so anyway, so this workflow that we developed is called WIMP. It's called What's in My Pot. And what you do is that you put in uh, a sample, say, of from the river. And with a bit of sample prep, we will tell you exactly what bacteria we find in it. So say you get 100,000 hits. You get 100,000 data points matching to a specific bacteria. Um, and they will vary in accuracy. They'll vary depending on exactly which bacteria they map to. And, um, and that was kind of the challenge I was given. This was like a month ago. They gave me this task to visualize this information. So what I'd want to do is I'd want to highlight the, the context you'd see between bacteria being closely linked to each other. So you'd see, you'd want to group them and also highlight them on the big taxonomy tree. Because I think there's a lot of information in just um, seeing them linked together. Because maybe in this specific case, you'd have, is this not E. coli? No, E. coli is not on here. Uh, but we had an example of one of the uh, one of the girls in the office had a, had a had a horse who was ill, so we sequenced the we sequenced the the poo of the horse, right? Mm -hmm. so what's in my poo? Uh, and um, we found a pathogen. So we found a, a pathogenic bacteria by running this analysis, and we were then able to get, go to the vet and tell the vet that we believe this horse has got this specific bacteria, can we get the antibiotic? And the horse was fine. Um, and that's the kind of questions I think a lot of people will be asking that maybe aren't from a bioinformatics background, maybe more uh, clinicians or veterinarians or, I mean, so biologists in general who have no real association to the field of bioinformatics. Uh, so I think my challenge is communicating a bioinformatics, uh, this, this, this kind of data, to people who don't know prior experience, I can't really make too many assumptions as to what they know. So anyway, um, there's quite a lot of information as well that I'll be given. I'll be given 100,000 data points. I'll be given a taxonomy tree in this case. This is a graph structure, right? It's a graph structure of uh, parents and children with, in this case, I think 8,000 bacteria. And out of that, I'll extract a number. I'll show them. And what you can do, I think, talked about semantic zooming in the sense that you would not display all this at once. Instead, I would try to, I try to hide a lot of it initially. Um, and I would add things like a filter. So you see, I mapped the confidence that we have that we're correct in finding the right bacteria <coughs> in the color. So the blue means we're confident. Yellow means we're not confident. Um, and then you could filter. So you'd say, you can filter by this confidence. And you can also see that the thickness here corresponds to how many matches we got. So these will be the most interesting ones. The big fat ones are the ones you care about, primarily. Because they're the ones that are most likely to actually be in your sample. Uh, so I think it's quite a cool way. I think it kind of highlights how a good visual, a visualization can communicate a lot very quickly. Um, and if people want to find out more, we have further steps. This is just a quick overview. It's real time. So you put your sample in, and within a minute, you'll be seeing this, and the bacteria will keep popping in. Uh, you can run it until you're satisfied that you got the right answer. So we'll do that again. Um, and also, the, I think the, the use of interactivity is quite useful in the sense that you can, you can really highlight 
interconnectedness in the data by having that kind of mouse over effect, linking li linking different parts. Anyway, that's it. Uh, I will be making most of this open source quite soon. Hopefully, part of BioJS. We'll see when. See when my manager approves, but it will happen. Yeah. So I, um, I'd like to know the link between the potentially pathogenic bacteria and the actual illness. How, how can I validate that? Because obviously you gave, you yeah. gave the antibiotic, but, but for you to know that that specific one is the one that is causing the disease, how can you know that? We talked about doing this as a, another overlay later, maybe having, because that's another layer of information on top of all this that we haven't actually applied yet. Um, and that will require a, a larger level of clinical expertise, because this at the moment is very black and white. We have found this bacteria, period. Like yeah. there isn't, there's a bit of probability involved in this, but nothing more than that. Whilst what you're talking about is much more of a clinical decision. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think, I think diagnostic. Diagnostic, yeah. So what we're talking about doing, I think, more than anything else, is linking this to maybe another workflow afterwards, where you keep on analyzing until maybe someone who's an expert on this will build something that gives, <coughs> gives you that answer. I won't do it. <laughs> Definitely not. It's, it's the idea for Metrical to create a series of workflows like this for specific purposes. So yeah. Is one. But are there any others that you're, you're thinking of? There are lots. Most of them that you can think of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Adam. No worries.